Hey Levi, I'm back again with another lesson for this week. Uh, I think we've just about done everything we can for uh, wildwood flower. I uh, can't really see any point in, in uh, trying to drag it out anymore uh, than what we already have. Uh, we've already, you know, last week we covered the whole... We covered that and we covered... And you can use that in so many different uh, songs in C or even if you used to move it up to D and play it in D. Uh, so what we're going to do now is there's another Carter tune that's very similar to Wildwood Flower and it's really popular and it's really good, another good beginner song. And it's probably actually easier, actually it is easier than Wildwood Flower because on the chorus it doesn't have those weird chord changes like with the Wildwood Flower you got that E7 we was talking about. So this one's called Bury Me Beneath the Willow and a lot of people call it uh, bury me beneath the weeping willow and I've called it that too uh, for some reason but this was called bury me beneath the willow and uh, what I think might be good to do is just go ahead and move it up so that we can get used to playing in another position on the fretboard so let's go ahead and put this in D which I think the most of the time for the majority of the time this is actually in D and played in D so now we can use all the cool right here. Now I encourage you to practice those with this because now that we've moved up two steps the frets are just a slight hair closer together than they were up here. So you kind of got to get your hands used to being a little closer than being spread out like they were back here. So that'll it'll, you know it'll kind of get you used to playing and uh, instead of instead of sliding like if, if these are closer together you have a tendency to overshoot where the slide is. Like you'll go past it a little bit. So practice doing the little X, like we talked about the last time, last video. So we're gonna start with this, and I'm sure you've probably heard this, and if you've heard Wildwood Flower, the chances are you've heard this song. Uh, if not, then uh, this would be a good song for you to learn, like I said. Once again, it is in the Carter style, the Carter family style, and there is not a lot of uh, difficult picking involved. There is a lot of downstrokes uh, on each, uh, on the melody notes. So that's a really good one to start out with. So it kind of goes like this, and I'll sing a bit of it so that you can get the melody, and then I'll go ahead into the actual the picking of it so that you can see how it matches. Once again, you always want to start with a melody of a song. And now the cool thing is, now that we know a lot of the, the, the notes that we can use, like... notes that we've been using for Wildwood Flower, we can use some of those notes in uh, Bury Me Beneath the Willow. So it's cool, it, it translates from one song to another. You can copy and paste licks from one uh, thing to another. So it's really, really cool how that works out. So let's go ahead and start this. My heart is sad and I am lonely for the only one. When will I see her? Oh, no, never till we meet heaven above. Oh, bury me beneath the willow under the weeping willow tree. pretty melody. By the way, the last part that I messed up on was, uh, so she will know where I'm sleeping and perhaps she'll weep for me. Very, very pretty song. Very nice, especially the slower it gets. I mean, the more beautiful the, the tune is. 
but this is a really easy tune to play mm -hmm. and uh, there's some cool opportunities here since we only have three chords there's some opportunities where we're going to be resting on the G again so we've got like two or three beats that we can rest on that G and put like maybe a, a good G lick in there or something like that and there's a good opportunity or two for the first fret pull off as well on the D string okay uh, I'm going to do this again, and what I want you to do is pay attention to this hand, how many times I'm actually in the chord shape. Remember way back when I was telling you not to worry about, a lot of people worry about having to play, having to stay in the chord shape when they're playing these notes. And they, they forget that they can loosen their fingers and they can maybe hit one or two notes of the chord shape. So I'm going to do this again, and I want you to notice uh, how how many times I either, you know, stray away from the chord shape, I guess. A lot of times I'm actually in the chord shape. So let's try this again, I'll do it a little faster. time I'm right here in the chord shape of C and this G uh, you can also do this G if you prefer um, and I don't know if we've the end I don't think we've uh, uh, at the end of Wildwood Flower okay so at the end we haven't done that do 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 so that's a cool thing uh, going down the scale it's actually part of the melody so basically we've got C F and this is the F that I'm going to sometimes I hit that E uh, open but for the most part you might want to do it with a bar shape here and a lot of people do this too which is fine I mean you can do this like you do a C you can do the same thing with that If you want to do that, but typically I just tend to do this. Okay, um, so just that there's an idea on that. Very simple. You can use either your pinky here or just bring this finger up. And this time, when you do this one note, you can actually go. Notice your pinky comes down, and then this comes down. So it's kind of like a little quick shift uh, there and back to the uh, F chord. Okay. Now the reason we need this note and the reason I did this F shape is because it's in the, the melody. So we need that note. So that's why I typically use this F shape and another thing that's really good to note to utilize is um, right after this you're going to be util utilizing the C shape and the C shape that looks like this so basically you're moving this ring finger up one string putting your pinky down where that one was and you've got the whole you know uh, C chord with the G in the bass and that's going to be used uh, right here This is a tricky part because what I have to do is lift these two fingers up. That's it. Let me start over. Now I'm lifting up. You can lift because it's easier to lift up both fingers than it is that pinky. Because for one thing, the pinky's underneath my ring finger, and you have to kind of go out and around it. And plus, it's, the middle finger tends to come up on the nail comes up on the D so it doesn't really sound good or it vibrates or rattles so I just keep these two fingers where they're at when I go to that F and just go the D and the A string now I'm hitting the A string after I come back down you might, you might just want to practice that part It's going to be, and that's where 
we're going to use that low note. It's almost as if we're going to the G from a C. Just like that, okay? But it's not doing that. It's... Now these two fingers stay down. These two here. And you lift that middle finger up from the C shape. Or you can go... Which is... You're hitting the note on, that your pinky's on. And then this comes up and you can either hammer on or take down on it. And then you can lift this up. And then you've got a couple beats here. One, two, three, four. So you got a four count there. By the way, I haven't counted this when I started. So let's count this from the top and see what the count is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's just to give you an idea of what it looks like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now this gets tricky because with me, I have to remember that I don't go. I don't do that. I have to bring this finger back down. I have to skip that A string and come back down the D string. As if I'm in the C shape already when I'm actually in the G shape. So that's a kind of a tricky spot there. And then right here I would typically go the G the G run that we went over several videos back. Uh, straight back to the now if you're going from this G I don't I'm not going to say that you have to come back real quick and do this you can do it with these two fingers here and that open string gives you time to switch to that C okay so it's gonna be like this Things the same up until this point. At the end, uh, it's a little different. It ends a little different. See, and all it is is you're gonna put. You're gonna start with where your pinky is. So it's a quick descend and then a slower ascend. Here I usually get that's that's all down strokes, and then the one exception here is on the D. See. And that's gonna go to the G. Let's see. Let's start from the top so we won't get confused. Let's see. And so that goes straight to the G. Open A, and then upstroke on the D, and then back to that C shape, with that being the last note. So uh, the last half again. And the end of that is just a simple, I'm keeping the C shape. See. Now you can do this one or two different ways. It just depends on what's more comfortable for you. Typically, we like to hit in bluegrass setting. Typically, you like to hit the last note with a downstroke because it's got more attack uh, and it's more prominent. You can do this one or two ways. You can go, you go down and up, down on the D, pull or hammer on up on the G, and then down on the D again, and then up. 
on the uh, B string. Now, with me, I just do it whichever way just feels comfortable. I don't do it a certain way uh, every time. But here's the other way you can do it. You can do two downs in a row. Down and up. We have that inside of the string little phenomenon there. It, feel, it kind of makes us feel trapped. But then you have to skip over the G string hit that down stroke. Which is sometimes tough to do. And that happens. So typically I think I revert to the other way uh, more often than not. It's a little softer of a, of a note than that. But at least I don't have to worry about hitting a wrong string there. So let's do this from the top. And once again, uh, if you're on YouTube, which you probably will be watching this, you can go to your bottom right-hand corner and click that little cog, that little wheel. Um, looks like a gear. And adjust the speed to slow it down about half speed. And uh, if you need to uh, slow it down. Most of the time, most of the videos now do that on YouTube. So let's start from the top. Also, it kind of combine that with the uh, one of the ending licks on Wildwood Flower. And that's once again up, down, up, and then a pull off, and that's a down stroke. And then an up stroke on that D, and that way it'll give us a down stroke on that uh, A string. When you go down the G string, make sure not to go too far uh, because you want to come back. You want to kind of go out a little bit so you can come back and go up. Then once again, that's that inside the string thing. And you can come back up on that D string there. Now I haven't been doing the. I just haven't thought of it. You can do it there if you want to. That's fine. The, I mentioned the first fret pull off, and right there is where it would happen. Here's how it would sound. And Tony Rice does this a lot, and it sounds really cool. And then the rest of it progresses the same way. Once again, that is. And that's down. last note you need to be on this F. He actually does it a little faster. But if I do it, if I don't land right on the beat, let's see. Um, one, one, let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Whereas if you do it faster, it'll land like this. And it's hard to do this while counting. Let's see. Three, four, one, two, three, four, and a, it's like a, it lands on right before the four, I think. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right before the one, it lands. But it kind of leaves you hanging because once I hit land there, my hand wants to go down on the beat. Uh, so I just typically instead of you know hanging while that you know it's there, the note is there. So uh, Tony does it that way every now and then, but uh, just whatever your preference is. Okay, so let's do this up to speed. Okay. 
my, my display keeps dying on me. But uh, let's see, we're up to about 20 minutes on this. Hopefully we can go through this whole thing with that quick time freezing up. I've only got a few more things to go over, or maybe one or two more things. Uh, one of them is, let's do an extra lick in G. We've been doing so many licks in C, and it's not really an extra lick, but it's an extra extension to a lick we've been doing. And this is the Okay, uh, we've been doing that, but let's, I like doing this a lot, and that is a, what I call a unison slide. And that's, uh, you hit the open G, and then slide to that G. And it's really important your guitar's in tune, so that it, it's not gonna be like, like that, you know. Um, so that would come up when we land on the G. It's only, it's a very short time to do it. see and what I'm doing is as soon as I hit that note I come up on that uh, G now most of the time I tell people you want to hit the very last note here as a downstroke but now when you add that slide it's not a no it's no longer the last note so I typically go up on that one because the last note's going to be a, a very and you're gonna to have to have a hard stroke to make it sound all the way, you know, three frets up from the second to the fifth. And that's second to the fifth as if we didn't have a capo. And uh, it's just a quick. So I'm hitting that um, right here. Now I'm not going to hit that up here because the next note is a, a G. So I'm just going to hit it. Uh, here and here and then a just one note there so it'll, it'll sound like this okay so you can you can add that in there so that's really good if, if you're playing in anything in G This is good to set you up for playing in other things, you know. Okay, and all that was was. So I'm coming straight back down to that second fret. Open D. First fret to second fret A, and then open D again. And then back down to that G note here on the E string. Third fret. Okay, so the next thing I was going to do is one extra chord you can use uh, to substitute for that C7 there. And this happens here. Uh, now, you typically don't play it when you're playing the picking, but you could use it if you're singing it and just strum it. And in place of doing that, you can actually uh, do a... a a, a very small variation on a B. And all that is, is, I'm not sure if we went over a B chord or not, I don't think we have. You can do this a couple different ways. This is the F, okay? All you have to do is uh, lift this finger up. Like if we're going from a C, um, take and lift the middle finger up, move this finger down one string, and then put the pinky underneath it. And typically you want to bar this finger here. Because three notes is hard to just play three notes. Typically, you want to play more than three, like four or something. So this would happen here. Now that would force you. That it, it, it kind of forces you away from playing the melody note there. Because these notes are not in the melody. But it's a good little transition there. And it might even be better if you want to do it just when you're strumming instead of actually when you're playing because it might throw you off. But that's a cool little chord to use there, that B chord. Well, 
it's not a B where it is, but it's the B shape that I use. Typically, this is a B suspended. If you have the full chord, it looks like this. I'm barring it. So let's do this one more time through, and before, while we're having such good luck with quick time, we're going to go through this one more time and say sayonara for the day and hope you enjoy this uh, lesson. Hope it's uh, another good, interesting uh, lick. Now don't forget, you can still use a... Or, you know, so if we use, let's do that real quick. different because you don't have that spot in the C to hold and go like a new wildwood flower but it's a good way to lead it back in okay so you can kind of work that in and you might be able to even work the high part in sacrifices the first dun, 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 but it's it's still a cool trade-off now typically uh, as I'm playing this I'm realizing that I'm doing all upstrokes here the other way up down up down it's probably the way I should do it but it just it just happens you know the way it happens whenever I'm playing so one more three all the way through and then I'll say have a good day and that'll be the end of it gives you an idea of where to insert those things once again I inserted that one at a different spot but it's just give you some ideas to what to do with that so next week I don't have a clue what we're going to be going over <laughs> we've got one more week in July I think actually I think not July June we've actually got two more Mondays in June so uh, the last lesson on the 30th is going to be that free lesson we talked about since there's five Mondays in uh, the month but uh, we're just going to go, I don't, I'll just keep trying to think of things that relate to this until we see each other again the first uh, weekend in July. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to work. So we'll figure out what happens in the next video when it does. So thanks so much for watching, Levi, and I will leave you with that. I hope it's been a good one. Uh, if you have any questions or whatever, just leave me a comment or leave me a, uh, um, you know, send me an email or whatever. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll get off here and get this thing uploaded as soon as possible so you can be watching it. Talk to you later. God bless.